Well, welcome to another three-point edit tutorial, and this time we're going to be looking at uh, reconstructing at least the basis of the falling stripes animation that I've created recently. And this should be able to give you uh, some insight into how to recreate the material for yourself. So I'm still using 2.79 for this tutorial. I don't need the light and I don't need the cube, so let's delete both of those things. I'll reorient this uh, camera. Let's see. Oh, it looks pretty good. I'll put a plane here, add mesh. Add a plane, scale that up. That looks pretty good. Make sure that I'm in cycles mode so I can create a texture. This is not going well. There we go. Shift Z, change that to render. I'm going to uh, change my sample rate in the preview window to something like 10 units. And change this view to no editor, editor, make a new material. So we've started with a diffuse shader. I'm going to swap that to an emission shader. And we can see that it's all generating white. And I don't want it to be a surface shader. I want it to be a volumetric for the additive light effect. And now you can see that our emission has no effect. So we need to give our plane some depth. We'll go down add a solidify. Make it a bit thicker and now it's glowing white. So if we look on edge, you can see through it it's thicker. When we look from the top it's thinner. So that's what we want to do is emit from within the volume. I'll change the color. Let's give it a nice electric blue. Give it a bit of saturation. Brightness. Ensure that our color management is turned on, filmic. I'm going to use very high contrast for this to get nice contrasty edges. Now the next thing we need to do is I'm going to add uh, texture coordinates because we're going to drive a couple of textures or at least one from texture coordinates. So type in texture coordinates. We know that it's coming from the plane. I don't need to add that. I'm going to add also a brick texture. This is going to generate our bands or stripes. Uh, start modifying these numbers. That's all pretty good. We come down to scale, uh, mortar size. We're not going to have any mortar size just at the moment. Uh, it doesn't matter about the smoothing. Brick width, however, is going to be quite large because it will define the stripe itself and the row height will be oh, quite small. We'll leave it at 2.25. Next thing we want to do is mix that with another shader and we're going to mix that with a gradient. So. Let's grab our gradient shader, our uh, texture, I'm sorry, gradient texture. We'll put this down here. This is going to be a spherical texture. And we need a couple of maths, maths nodes to vary these. So we'll place a modulo here. You'll see what that's for directly. Uh, or at least one math node. And we need to mix these two shaders. So let's grab the mix RGB node and we're going to plug these in. So I'll take the color from here and we'll take the object space uh, coordinate but we need to modify it so we will add a mapping node. I'll leave the mapping node in texture for the moment. We'll come back to that later to see its effect. Next thing I need to do is take the color mix value, plug it into modulo, and actually color mix should be a subtract in this case. Subtract, subtract, whoops, up the top. Make this 0.782. So we're going to take away the um, brick texture from the texture coordinate to define our stripes <coughs> in a repeating pattern, and then we'll plug our gradient in a modulo into the gradient texture. I'll plug all of this into the strength. You can see some effect happening there. We want to multiply uh, that. So another math node. set to multiply 
give it quite a large value here to make it very very bright you can see the thickness taking effect here this is the additive light effect so that when we look at it at different angles we get a different kind of effect and this is what helps us define this interesting um, sort of Fresnel uh, luminosity effect if you like so depending on the angle you get a different kind of brightness so anyway you can see if we look at it from top on we've got these stripes and bars happening or graduated bars next thing I'll do is make a ramp whoops can't spell place the ramp in between here I'm going to pull up this value to get more definition from our stripes and I'm sort of going to soften it more with the B-spline so we get more of a gradual fall off you can tighten it right up and have a very bright edge if you wish I'm going to change the modulo a little bit, make it 0.48 make it a little bit tighter now we're going to modify the mapping coordinates and this is where you'll notice that the uh, nature of the stripes is going to change so we'll start typing in values 1.74 here see it get narrower minus, point one, minus 193 taller rotate this by minus 73.2 square and there you have it and if you want the stripes to fall animate this value if we animate that place a keyframe there go up to 100 Oops, we want it to go up towards the light like so place another keyframe there and so I animate up not getting good resolution here let me change our samples for a start performance 64 try 32 there we go and perhaps speed them up so there you have it anyway that's the fundamentals of making the uh, glowing s random stripes and uh, with a pretty straightforward with a fairly straightforward um, node, node tree the key, one of the key things that I discovered was that you really do need to run it in filmic mode uh, at high contrast, if you use base contrast it doesn't look as nice so I just ran it in very high contrast you can keep on driving the values up as much as you like um, more samples will make this look nicer, also a shallower depth so if we go to our object and bring its depth way way down whoops, too much and the one on top let's see, this one you get a much nicer edge uh, the reason it looks noisy for me at the moment is that I just don't have enough samples turned on so we could do the animation well thanks very much for watching and uh, I hope that you can get some more out.